Today we're setting up and reviewing a controller that doesn't use thumbsticks to aim, but rather a trackpad like a laptop and gyroscope motion aiming. Not only that, it does both of those very well on the consoles. That's right, PS5 and Xbox Series S and X. But before you get up in arms thinking this thing is another cheater box device like a Cronus that's going to allow for an unfair advantage in multiplayer, au contraire mon frere, in fact when you pick up this device you're going to be at a slight disadvantage until you get good with that touchpad and gyroscope motion aiming until you're actually keeping up with regular keyboard and mouse players, which by the way, this will default your console into K&M mode, so it knows, hey, this is not a gamepad, this is a keyboard and mouse, as all the buttons on this thing are clearly labeled. Space, shift, Q, and escape. By golly, those are keyboard bindings. And you're right, and they're not bound out of the box. Your guy's gonna be doing weird stuff on screen until you dial it in. There is a setup process for it. But at the end of the day, I fully understand why this gamepad was recommended for me to review by a lot of my audience. This thing is, for lack of a better word, pretty sick, and I have never seen a gamepad like this. Let's get it. This is your controller, Captain. We've reached 6,900 feet. Go ahead and start flicking the sticks and mollywhopping the back paddles. Mm, you don't like back paddles? How about those rear buttons? We've tested almost 100 custom and premium controllers, and we're only at the beginning. You need a thumbstick guide or a tutorial on how to overclock your controller? Check out the controller playlist. Bing bong. Controller Captain out. A quick disclaimer for my audience, the Stallions and Stallionettes, this gamepad was sent for review, but this is going to be an honest, comprehensive review. I haven't been paid or told to say anything about it, so if there's any cons, shortcomings, or areas of improvement, you're going to hear about it, so these companies make better products over time. The very first thing I want to touch on with this controller is the legality and functionality of it. How does it work on console? Is it going to allow you to cheat or get an unfair advantage in multiplayer? The answer to that is going to be a resounding no, which is good because I wasn't sure. When I picked this thing up, I did a little research on it, tested a few things myself, and this works in a completely unsketchy way. The main reason being when you use this controller, it will be defaulted as a keyboard and mouse input, so you are being match made, if you are playing multiplayer that is, with other keyboard and and mouse players, which I think you're going to be at a pretty big disadvantage while you get over that huge initial learning curve, which will take you at least a month, in my opinion, to get proficient with a trackpad and gyroscope motion aiming. Some people pick it up quicker than that. I'm not one of them, but it's not like you're going to be stomping on traditional controller players because you're not playing against them. And a secondary and equally important side point is the fact that if you're on the PC side of the house, you are already playing against players that are using trackpads and gyroscope motion aiming, as you could be playing against people on Steam Decks. ROG allies and Lenovo Legion Go's, which have trackpads. Well, the ally doesn't have a trackpad, but it does have that gyroscope motion aiming, like all three of those handheld PCs. Not to mention the stock PlayStation 4 and 5 controllers, the first party OEM Sony joints, have phenomenal six axis gyroscope motion sensing and are notorious for being used for that purpose by PC controller players. Furthermore than that, just typical gaming laptops have a trackpad, and if you don't plug in a mouse, that is your default input for a mouse, so you're aiming with a trackpad, so it's really no different than having this or a Steam Deck, in my personal opinion. Not to mention, I still think you have a tremendous advantage going with a typical mouse. Oh, it's flashing red because she's low battery. That's scary. Over something like a trackpad because you have good skates on a full-size mouse pad, about 8 to 12 inches of movement. You got your elbow, you got your wrist, you got the little Fionite movements. You're not going to get any argument that a mouse is not a better input for shooters than a gamepad. You're not going to get that argument from me. I've already covered the topic. And if you're on console and not PC, there are still players that are using premium or Pro controllers that do have gyroscope that you can enable, including in multiplayer. So what they do is the big movements with their analog sticks, you're snap aiming, maybe you hear footsteps behind you, you whip that 180, and then for those finite precise movements, you engage that gyroscope motion to where you just barely move your wrist, and I'm hovering my crosshairs over your chin and delivering a bullet to it. It's pretty sick. Again, I talk like I'm slick shit at it. I'm actually not very proficient with touchpad or gyroscope motion aiming. I've been using thumbsticks or analog sticks for about 29, 30 years, but that is the main main thing I wanted to touch on, this device isn't one of those sleazy, sneaky devices that's part of that major Xbox ban, although this could be part of a future Xbox ban because this doesn't have that stamp or sigil on the box that it is a licensed Microsoft or Sony product, as this is a generic, well not generic, it has a brand, if you fucking dare, this doesn't have that stamp and sigil, that lime green or blue placard. So yes, this could eventually get blocked for multiplayer use, although I will say this does still work in multiplayer, no problem, and again, this doesn't give 
you an unfair advantage because it's throwing you into the fucking gulag, into the gauntlet. You're running the crucible against fucking sweat lords on keyboard and mouse, and you're over here on a touchpad and gyroscope motion aiming, which will take you about a month to get good with. But once you do, you'll probably hold your own. This isn't one of those sleazy devices that spoofs your console into thinking, yeah, this is still a controller plugged in, but you're sitting over there with a keyboard and mouse while still getting the aim assist of controller and being match made with players on controller or any crappy crap like that. No, you can wipe that stinkage off your nostrils because it doesn't happen with this. Every single game I tested on the PlayStation and the Xbox immediately recognized that this was a keyboard and mouse, along with all the setbacks of that, meaning you have to do all of your bindings at first because the buttons are going to be doing some weird stuff. Clicking down the stick is going to be crouch, not sprint. Aiming down sights is going to be on the left trigger, not the right. So every game you launch, you're going to have to bind everything on here, and then you're also going to have to fine tune your sensitivity for the touchpad. Now, as far as price and models, there are two different variants, and they're not really separated by a huge price gap. For $50, you have a wired variant, and for $60, you have the wireless 2.4 gigahertz dongle version, which I recommend you pop for. Reason being, you can still go wired if you want to enjoy minimal input lag or delay, but with that wireless dongle, it makes pairing up to the consoles seamless. You plug it in, you power it on, and the convenience of having the option to go wireless, for me, is worth the $10 difference. These are both linked in the description below. Also, it looks like if you also makes a traditional gamepad called the Vone, kind of looks like a stinker just from first glance. As for the packaging and included accessories on the GT P01, if you dare to fuck around and find out, sorry, I had to. Very simplistic packaging, passing on the savings to the customers. This is a entry or budget level controller. No laser cut foam or a premium unboxing experience, but you do have your controller held in place with this plastic cutout. Their logo with a QR code on the other side. A very short rubber USB-C cable, not microfiber or braided, no dust covers on the A or C side, and no Velcro tie back, just a little bread bag tie you can throw out. This thing is so wild. I have never seen a controller like this. I almost missed this dongle, so be very careful. It was just floating all nilly willy at the bottom. I think it's supposed to snap into one of these cutouts, but it simply wasn't. It was loosey goosey. Also, this does look incredibly cheap and chintzy with a very big seam down the middle, and it feels like it weighs nothing. Your instruction manual, pamphlet, or brochure. English is going to be pages 1 through 14. You do have a one year warranty and 90 day or three month free replacement. So if you pick this bad boy up and it's not satisfying you in the game or nether regions, you can swap her out for a freshie or a refund, I would assume. And they do have some resources for you here, including video tutorials, which you don't need because you're already watching a video on this controller. But you do have driver support, so if you're having any issues with this bad boy on PC where it's just janked up for you. Firmware update, bud. And I really do like this diagram, this breakout of all the controls. Holy shit. And this one getting a little more complicated. This is actually a pretty good instruction manual. English is the primary language, decent font, color. This is great. As for the controls on this gamepad, because it really is unlike any other controller I've tested on the channel. It's got a massive mouse touchpad on this side. It's got gyroscope motion aiming and it's got buttons, controls, doodads that associate with a keyboard. For example, space, shift, function, left and right mouse click, E, Q, so this controller looks a little bit different than your typical gamepad. First of all, the power button, how do you even turn this sucker on? It is going to be this cog icon. You plug that dongle into the front suck hole of your Xbox Series S or X or your PlayStation 5, and it's pretty plug and play. You get up and running with it. Now, don't be confused or upset if you start scrolling around and it's not navigating the menu. You are still going to need a regular gamepad, a native controller for that console to navigate the menu and then launch into a game that does have native keyboard and mouse support. This entire touchpad is going to work like a laptop where you can navigate the menu of the game, get through your settings, go through your bindings, and then of course, play with the sucker. Now I want to start with the build quality because this does feel really cheap and chintzy, but I simply don't care because I don't think it's going to make a big difference. This doesn't feel brittle like it's going to snap in your hand. I don't think it'll survive many, if any, hard drops. But as long as you're just holding this thing and not smacking it into your desk, you should be just fine. Yes, the plastics feel porous, cheap, chintzy, flimsy, but that's to be expected. This is a cheap gamepad. Also, it is very light, but I actually like that. I'm not one of the subscribers to the camp that a heavy heavier gamepad makes it feel more premium or flagship because we've done teardowns or disassemblies of controllers like the Power A Fusion 1 and 2, which had fishing weights, basically sinkers in the palm grips to try and fool the consumer into thinking, oh brother, this is one durable gamepad. This is a very light gamepad. Along the lines of that touchpad, one of the things I really do like is the fact that edge detection is very good. So even when your fingers up against this plastic and not even on the touchpad, you are still registering your movements. Also around here, the cutout with the face buttons, perfect registration 
registration over here. You would get a little bit more range of motion if this was a full touchpad, but that's totally fine. But if I had to slap a grade on the touchpad, I am going to give it a nine out of 10. The edge detection is fantastic. It's very, very responsive. You can dial in your settings, not only in game, but also directly on this bad boy by holding down the cog icon and then up or down on the D-pad to dial in the sensitivity of the trackpad. Fantastic. Clicking down the touchpad doesn't sound very satisfying or confidence inducing. It sounds like aisle four of Toys R Us. It's very loud and very hollow sounding. So if you don't have a headset or blaring your surround sound, you're definitely gonna hear that. But that is what I have the gyroscope bound to. So whenever I click down on this trackpad, so I can be tracking like this for my big swing aiming or my snap aiming and then click it down, boom, those finite precise movements. Maybe I'm sniping or trying to click faces. Also right below that, you will have a scroll wheel, nice rubberized pad. There are nice distinct notches or steps. I really like this. This is what I have bound to swapping my weapons. And it also clicks in. So that is another function or binding. Love that for you. This is going to be to go back in menus and also pause your game as it is the escape key. And all of these are indeed keyboard bindings, as you can see from the left and right mouse click. Now, this is very confusing for me, and I swap these in every single game I played. But this has the left mouse click over here and the right mouse click over here. As opposed to a traditional controller, we are going to aim down sights here and shoot here. And they're also not lined up. So I have this as right mouse click for aiming down sights and this for shooting me old pistol. Now, this little E button I love because you can straighten out your your index finger and quickly hit these. Also, all of these buttons are mechanical, very tight, very tactile, clicky, very responsive. Every single button on here, minus the D-pad, this is a membrane switch, but everything else, all the face buttons. Nope, not that one, that's just a typical button. That's a typical button, that's a typical button. Okay, all of the playable face buttons that you're gonna be using are indeed mechanical, even these back bad boys. Okay, not function, but that's actually not a bindable button in gameplay. These all are, but function is not. That is going to be for, indeed, controlling the functionality of the device. As far as the analog or thumbstick, I am a fan. It is grippy and also is a full-size thumbstick, so you have good range of motion. Also, clicking down L3 feels very tight and responsive, and this would be an absolute pass for me if the analog stick was a chunk of crap, considering this is the best of both worlds. You have a controller on this side, so you can run your dude around as you're gonna have more control of your movement versus just the WASD keys, but over here, you have a trackpad and motion sense aiming. Luckily, the thumbstick is very nice. It does have an anti-friction ring as well, so you're gonna glide along smooth plastic when you're at full lock around the outside of the thumbstick gate. Love that for you and me as well. Quick note, that is a potentiometer thumbstick module, not a hall effect joint. That's not a big deal to me at all. Now, ergonomically, this thing is hell of comfortable to hold. I wasn't sure at first, but as soon as you just pick the sucker up off your desk, it feels great. You only have one ergonomic palm grip on the left side, so it's not symmetrical, but it really doesn't matter. It still feels fantastic, which comes down to that lightweight palm grip, which allows you to hold the whole device. Everything just comes together nicely. This is a very comfortable ergonomic design. I'm going to give it an eight out of 10. The only reason I don't go higher and give it a nine or a 10 is this is the first controller like this that I've tested. So I'm sure there's room for improvement with other companies or this company with their next version or iteration. This is a perfect time to slide in the measurements and weight. This is 172 by 108 by 42 millimeters. I wish I knew if that was length by height by depth. Yeah, I think it is. And then product weight, she's light. I can't even see what I'm looking at. Gosh darn it. She's on a diet. Jenny Craig, 168 grams. As for the overall experience on the Xbox consoles, you take the dongle and insert it into one of the USB ports, power on the controller with the cog icon. You're going to be confused because it's not going to be controlling the menus. You still need your standard native controller to do that and launch a game that has native keyboard and mouse support. Before you do that, go into the settings and you're going to go into accessories and go down to mouse and you're going to be able to dial in your sensitivity. Keep in mind, you're also going to have individual in-game sensitivity just like playing a PC game. And if you're playing a game that for some reason doesn't have a slider for mouse sensitivity, you can actually hold down the cog icon and up and down in the D-pad to dial in your sensitivity on the fly on the board of the controller. But initially when I played my first game, which is the Halo Master Chief Collection, just the story or campaign, not online or anything like that, the sensitivity was way too slow or sluggish. Where from corner to corner on the touchpad, I was only moving my character about 20 degrees on screen. But after manually going into the settings and dialing in not only my bindings because all the button bindings were funky right out of the gate, but also greatly increasing the mouse sensitivity. It is now incredibly snappy. And when I just lightly drag my finger across the thumbstick, I have plenty of control, but I can also snap aim or quickly change direction as well, which is important considering unlike something like the Steam Deck or a controller with built-in gyro support, you don't have the thumbstick to be able to handle the big movements and then that gyroscope to dial in the finite precise movements. You're doing it all with the touchpad and gyro. A good way to train your brain is that the touchpad is replacing the the thumbstick and you still have gyro. Same exact story on the PlayStation side of the 
the house, the first thing you want to do is to go to the cog icon, go into your system settings, go to accessories, and then make sure you dial in your sensitivity for the mouse. Now, I did test this with the story of Modern Warfare 3. If you haven't caught my comprehensive review of that, linked in the description below, as it's not as terrible as everyone's saying, but it does slip on a banana peel, especially with those open combat missions, which is six out of the 11 in the campaign. Also, it is worth a mention that you have a ton of control over that gyroscope motion aiming, as you have two pages of instructions as to how to fine tune it, and it's great that on the fly you can dial in the sensitivity, you have great edge detection, pretty much the full scale and size of that touchpad. And even if you don't have great software support from a game where you have a slider for sensitivity, the onboard control should get you at least playable, if not enjoyable with a game. Any who diddly you, how the hell do you do? This thing ran really good in Call of Duty, felt snappy, and I can see myself after a month or so of using this becoming quite proficient. Am I going to actually dedicate myself to using touchpad and gyro for a month to get good at it? No, absolutely not. I have been gaming on controller for almost three decades. I'm proficient with typical keyboard and mouse, but I feel the most comfortable with a gamepad in my hand. And while I think it's super cool to have a touchpad and gyroscope in a controller that's small, light, comfortable, it's still a type of game input that I personally won't be utilizing. I feel like I use it more on the handhelds like the Steam Deck because it's already right there where if you hover your hand over either the touchpad or the right analog stick as there is a little haptic presence sensor there. If you just hover your hand there, it activates the motion control. So as for the pros, cons, and verdict, we're going to start with the limitations, shortcomings, or areas of improvement. The build quality isn't fantastic, although I didn't really expect it to be. Any $60, we'll say sub $70 controller doesn't feel fantastic in the hand. And also I have tested three $400 premium or pro controllers that still feel like they're going to disintegrate in my hand because they're made out of paper mache. So uh, no real complaints with the build quality. As I mentioned originally when I was at the table over there, yeah, it feels cheap and chintzy, but as long as you're not dropping this thing, I don't think it'll just break in your hand. The next con, and this isn't really a con because if it didn't exist this way, it would be kind of a cheater box or cheater device. And that is the fact that you're not going to be able to play all games with this gamepad. It has to be titles that have keyboard and mouse, native keyboard and mouse support, as that is what this device is going to be recognized. It's going to switch over input. So certain games that don't allow multi input like COD, which is good. You don't want a game that allows multi input because that can open the door for cheating. You actually have to go into the settings and then toggle from controller to keyboard and mouse, then go through all of your bindings. And that's another con is that there is quite a bit of setup process. Every time you launch a new game, that initial start, you're going to have to go through button bindings, which will probably take you about five minutes. You also need to dial in the sensitivity of your trackpad and then bind which button you want to activate and deactivate gyro, which for me is clicking down on the Ooh, that sounds bad on the trackpad. So a lot of setup that goes involved in comparison to a traditional controller where it's plug and play. You, you just turn it on and you're up and running. Another fat con is there is zero quotes online about the battery life or charge time. I haven't been able to kill it yet. I have no idea what the quoted battery life or charge time is to pass on to my audience. It's not on the landing page of the official website of if you and it's not on the Amazon listing either. On to the pros. This is going to be a pretty different pros section than, than usual. This thing is fucking sick. I have not seen a gamepad like this and I absolutely absolutely recommend it if you're trying to use a trackpad or gyroscope on either one of the consoles or PC or Steam Deck. But what I actually like about it, the pros, it has great edge detection on the mouse pad or trackpad, very responsive. This mouse wheel also very responsive. All the buttons, tactile, clicky, the rear buttons, ergonomic, comfortable. This thumbstick, smooth, great range of motion, pretty taut dead zones, no complaints. And the overall ergonomics, this is hell of comfortable to hold, which it doesn't look like it. It looks like it's going to be silly to hold, but it's, it's not. Hmm. One little con, I know we're jumping back to the con section. I do wish this had support for the Switch. That'd be cool. It already supports the PS5 and the Series X. If you could shove that dongle into the dock of the Switch and get to gaming with it, that'd be cool too. But it does have multi-platform support. The if you is linked in the description below. If you want to click on it and I will see you oh, comment section. I've been forgetting about that recently. Drop it down there. Drop it down there like it's hot in the comment section. What you think about this thing? And I will see you stallions and stallionettes tomorrow. Peace. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers. This information will reach in a system as well, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, as well as honest gaming product reviews, keyboards, mice, headsets, controllers, mics, chairs, etc. There are some hefty exclusive discount codes found only in the description of my videos and only for the audience here at Gamer Heaven. I have links to all my other platforms and socials in the description below to get in touch with myself and the 
the stallions and stallionettes of gamer heaven, join the community discord and check me out at twitch.tv where I go live every other leap year on a blue moon. If it falls into an odd calendar number and my pH balance is on point. Just kidding. Starting June, I'm going to be live streaming a lot. Thanks for watching. This has been AK40 Kevin hosting gamer heaven, and I'll see you tomorrow because I upload daily all the time, 60% of the time, sometimes most of the time. Peace.